call to order this meeting of the uh, Town of Wendell Board of Commissioners and welcome all of you here tonight. It's nice to see so many faces, always. Um, our Pledge of Allegiance is going to be led by tonight by Captain, Police Captain John Slaughter. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you very much. Our invocation tonight from the Wendell Council of Churches, we have from Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, Reverend Cynthia Smith. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having us. Um, I was talking with uh, Miss Sherry, and she told me just to share whatever I wanted to, and yeah. then my husband had to remind me of all the stuff that's going on at Pleasant Grove. So we do have summer camp um, for um, uh, disadvantaged or um, uh, poor uh, children that can't afford to go to summer camp. And actually, Pleasant Grove is doing that free of no charge. So that was wonderful. We also have after school care when school is in. Um, we have feedings. Um, we have a food pantry that we feed the community on every other Tuesday and Wednesday. So um, I am. A, we are recent members of Pleasant Grove, and we always like to say that's a busy little church. <laughs> Amen. But I think it's a blessing. It really is. They do quite a bit, to be honest with you, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Um, and um, on behalf of my pastor, Asa Bell, and the Pleasant Grove family, we thank you for this opportunity to pray with you and to pray for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your holy, precious, and wonderful name. Father, we come before you on behalf of these great leaders of the town of Wendell, and we pray that you lead them and that you guide them in the way of your truth. Help them to make wise decisions that will not only bless the citizens of this community, but decisions that will honor you. Father, help them to lead with pure intentions and with godly conviction. Help them to love the things that you love and to care about the welfare of the citizens. Give them discerning hearts and bold faith to do what is just and pleasing in your eyesight. Open their eyes to see others as you do with great potential and great value. And Father, help us all to come together, as we just said, one nation under you. In order for us to accomplish that which you have ordained this country to do. For your word tells us, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Help us, O oh Lord, to turn in the direction towards you, that you might move this country as you see fit. We thank you in advance for what you're yet going to do and how you're going to continue to bless this, this town and these people. And Father, if we had 10,000 tongues, we just couldn't thank you and praise you enough for all that you're doing, all that you've done, and all that you're going to do. Bless this town of Wendell, and bless your people everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. right. No one signed up tonight for... Um, public comment. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
right, item number four, the discussion on the zoning text amendment to chapter 11 and chapters, chapters 11 and 17 of the UDO as they relate to street lights. The public hearing's been closed and um, we're going to give some direction. Mark. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, as stated, uh, this is not a public hearing. This is not something that we're looking for action on tonight, but rather just looking for direction from the board as a follow-up to the last time this board did meet. Um, and uh, I believe it was July 23rd. Uh, you have a section of your report that uh, entitled July 23rd, 2018 update um, for tonight's meeting. So at our April 8th meeting is the last time this came before the board. And um, we voted to bring proposed changes um, of streetlight standards back to this board at your July work session, so that's why we're here tonight. Uh, we've, the staff has prepared some different options for your consideration. Um, the board expressed some concern over uh, how the standard might apply to larger subdivisions versus smaller subdivisions uh, and expressed a desire to try, to try to create a different provision <laughs> that might apply to smaller subdivisions um, that may not want a, an HOA uh, in order to have the smaller pedestrian style streetlights in place as would be uh, required under the ordinance as stated or the draft ordinance as stated. Uh, so in your report, you have a number of, of options. Um, but first, uh, kind of there's two key questions. One is what, when we say want, we want to have a different option for smaller subdivisions, what are we talking about when we say smaller subdivisions? Uh, and then considering what options do we think might be appropriate for that group once we've defined it. Uh, so the first decision, again, is, is what are we talking about? What qualifies as a smaller subdivision uh, in this context? Uh, so different options could be things like looking at residential development less than 20 acres in size. Uh, and all of these would be not part of a larger subdivision. So the, the, in, the intent is not to have somebody circumvent the rules by just phasing out their uh, entire neighborhood into a bunch of smaller pieces. So we're talking about the entire um, uh, subdivision when we talk about this. So one option could be 20 acres in size. Um, but staff really isn't that much in favor of looking at a uh, total acreage. Uh, rather, we think that number of lots should be used rather than the, than the number of acres because you could have some lot, some similarly sized tracks that have much more density, much more lots, and different kinds of impacts and different abilities to uh, uh, accommodate the, the, the costs associated with street lights or accommodate costs that might be associated with HOAs. Uh, other options could be looking at number of lots. Uh, so we could look at you know, less than 25 lots or less than 50 lots or less than 75 lots. Uh, and of course, these are just options that staff has, has thrown out there for the board's consideration. Uh, I did want to give some context to look at some existing subdivisions and, and how large are they. Uh, so for things like Old Wendell, phase one, there's 29 lots. Uh, Wendell Crossing, the one that's proposed right now is 49. Woods of Blair Hills is very similar at 51. Uh, but some of these start getting larger. Brighton at 65, Foxborough is at 90, Edgemont Landing's phase one is at 110. Um, and the second phase of Edgemont Landing, uh, which is beginning construction, would add another 150 lots to it. And you also have acreage amounts associated with those just for, just for context. Uh, so the first question relates to what, what size are we really talking about in terms of lots, if we're going to create any kind of differing standard for them. And then the second decision would be, well, what different standard would we want to apply to these if we're creating a second category? Uh, so one option could be applying the same standard as we have for larger developments, uh, which just as a refresher was essentially saying that if you wanted to have a, what we would call an upgraded streetlight, more than our standard pole with a standard fixture on it, uh, then you would need to form an HOA. Uh, you would pay, you would have a contract with Duke Energy. Uh, but the town would reimburse you the cost of what our standard light would be at the standard spacing. So a standard fixture at 300 feet apart, we'd reimburse you that. So one option uh, could be to apply that same standard uh, to small and large alike. Obviously, the board expressed some concerns with this option, but I did want to list it as an option. Uh, another option could be doing what we currently have in our ordinance, uh, which is if you want to have an upgraded street light, then you have to determine what the cost difference is per pole per month. Uh, and then you uh, essentially calculate that out over a 20-year span, which is the standard Duke Energy contract length, and then you pay that amount of the difference in increased price over a 20-year span in one lump sum to the town up front. Um, that can be a substantial sum, which is part of the reason why we're looking to, to move away from that with the proposal of our streetlight policy. But again, we could, we could leave that as an option for the smaller subdivisions. They wouldn't have to create 
an HOA, they could calculate that figure, and if that's something they wanted to do to have those pedestrian lights, that could still be an option. And the third option that uh, staff uh, listed was similar to that second option, except for, in this case, it's a little more friendly, uh, or a, a little less costly in terms of the, the amount that you have to pay up front, which would be looking at what that cost difference is, but only going out 10 years, what the cost difference would be over a 10-year span rather than a 20-year span. Obviously, there's a whole lot of different options that could be considered, but I wanted to just kind of give us a starting point and then see where the board wanted to, to take this. Uh, if you want me to, if you'd like for me to give a, a more lengthy um, refresher on the proposed policy, I'd be happy to do so as well. But again, the, the main difference is uh, looking at having that currently, the upfront fee, the cost difference paid to the town for the 20 year sum if they wanted upgraded lights versus under the proposed policy, looking at have them the developer contract with Duke Energy, pay those costs as they come up on a monthly basis, and then the town annually would reimburse them the cost of what the standard poll would have cost us. Uh, so I'd be, like I said, happy to take any questions you may have or take this wherever the board wishes. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Mark? I would. Okay. Uh, Mark, uh, how would this be handled in this situation if they added on different phases? I mean, if, we, if it was at a certain time and Example: This if Old Glendale was at 29 watts, and they decided to go on and add another 70 watts, I mean, something like that. I mean, how would how would a situation be affected from this situation? Or, I mean, how would this work? Yeah. So we could we could structure it different ways. Um, you could take into account the number of lots that already exist when they're coming forward with their new submittal and determine if they're eligible for whatever rule we create if we put a lot number on it. Uh, you could also say that if it enough time passes between phases that it would now be considered, you know, its own submittal and you don't hold those existing lots against it. I think if you did that, you'd probably want to make sure it's a pretty substantial amount of time. But, you know, if 10 years pass between something, then you might look at that differently than if it was just two or three years. Uh, but those are details that we could, we could iron out just kind of depending on how, how strict or flexible you wanted the standard to be. So just, uh, I mean, with more lots, they're generally going to get a more of a return. Basically, generally as you get more density, you're going to have both more impacts and you're also going to have more of a return to the developer on developing at that denser um, degree. So you could say that, that they would be more able to uh, handle any costs that might be associated or organizational um, needs that might be associated with, with an HOA. Uh, for that reason, uh, we were looking at looking at uh, having, we thought looking at lots and kind of basing it off of density was more appropriate than pure acres because you could have, you could have, you know, acre lots in a subdivision that might be only have 20 lots that's on the same size as something else that would have 80 lots. Right. Like acreage, but then who cares how many lots there are? Why not look at the number of poles that would be required based on what they want to build and set it on that? So you you could create a standard that looked at total number of poles rather than total number of lots. Uh, certainly in our proposed policy where we look at doing a reimbursement, you know that that reimbursement amount is based on the number of poles. Uh, so you could structure that way. Uh, we would just need to consider how many total number of poles are we comfortable uh, with falling under this category where they would essentially, the town would be taking on a little bit more financial burden compared to the larger subdivision. But yes, you could, you could structure that way and in the reimbursement policy, the pole spacing is based on you know, 300 feet. So in a way, if you did it that way, you could base it off of your total street length and how many 
polls that would equate to. That's definitely an option. To a certain degree, both. Uh, I would say it was more initiated by the cost that was going to be involved from outside parties, developers looking to come forward and have to pay this huge sum up front. The, the cost to the town is more long-term cost. If we're receiving this lump sum, we may not feel the cost burden you know, for 15 or for 12, 20 years, uh, so, but it would eventually come. So it, it, it prompted that discussion, but it was, it was more so something that came out of uh, you know, when Wendell Falls was looking at coming on and how much that might be, or in Edgemont Landings and how much that might be, and you had developers that were uh, essentially re rejecting our policy and looking for, for another option, uh, whether that was directly contracting with Duke Energy, but then is that fair if we're not, you know, paying our part if we're saying that light poles are kind of a, or some amount of light is a basic necessity that we're supposed to provide. Um, so that's kind of how the discussion initiated. I mean, that's fine. I could, I could prepare some draft language based on where the uh, category is based on a certain number of poles, which is going to be dictated by your street length, essentially, uh, and then looks at the either or uh, category. The decision two would be the, number, the option number 200, decision two, and just see what the, the board thinks of that. And if that seems like something that the board wants to pursue, uh, then we could probably bring it back one last time for, for action, most likely. I also, you brought up something uh, for a, a, a regard to a question the commissioner Luke had, which was, um, what if they build one phase to, and it comes in just under whatever the metric is, and then a few years later have another? And so I would like to see some sort of uh, some sort of period there added, um, um, especially if it's the same developer. I think if it's the same developer, it should be at least five five or ten years to prevent somebody from coming in. Because sometimes space can take two or three years to build out by itself. Yeah, that's typical. Um, and so, I, yeah, somewhere around seven years, I think, would be a fair thing if it's going to be the same developer. If it's not the same developer, if it's truly a separate developer, um, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to impact them um, just because they're trying to do some infill or something like that. Does that, does that make reasonable sense? Yeah.
connect to another piece of property that could go, maybe that's a, a thing that we can look at, but I would hate for us to just for the business to kind of figure out who is behind the logo. And that is part of the reason why the language for that water allocation was kind of left a little more open-ended was to avoid something like that where it's, yeah, one person's individual name and then the next time it's an LLC and the next time it's somebody related or. So if it becomes an issue, then let's just make it seven years, no matter what. Then. I mean, because uh, we don't need to be up here teasing a Bart Shell Corporation. <laughs> Do you have everything you need? I believe so, yes. Thank you. All right, item number five is a discussion on the receipt of an economic development grant. Timer. Madam Mayor, members of the board, uh, the town recently received a letter of award for downtown development revitalization. As a part of that process, uh, we have to look at how we would uh, want to spend those funds toward uh, downtown or development revitalization. A um, couple of things that we have already done uh, to date is uh, the town board on June 25th uh, supported the creation of an independent economic development group and awarded uh, $5,000 toward that. Uh, and in the process, I'd like to get some feedback for you, from you today. We don't have to take any action. But one of the items that has come up is um, information and uh, direction on our downtown pedestrian lights. We have looked at that years ago, and we didn't have funds to do it. Since that time, and more recently, the uh, electrical in the area of Main Street, south of 3rd, and parts of 3rd Street uh, between Pine and Cypress are experiencing um, electrical issues and shortages uh, where ballasts are going, um, bulbs are going, and because it's been some time since they were put in, uh, it's becoming more costly to do replacements. One of the things I did meet with um, McKim and Creed engineers, they are the ones that looked at this uh, several years ago, and they have come back with a um, engineering cost for design of 10,600. I know because they haven't, they, we haven't approved the design or for them to move forward with that, and it's difficult for them to tell me what it would cost. But we're looking somewhere from the numbers in my discussions with them, probably around thirty-three to thirty-five thousand um, dollars for that. Now, again, and that's going to probably total somewhere with all these projects, with the engineering for design, the actual construction costs, as well as the other. Uh, looking at a nonprofit, it's going to run right around forty-eight, forty-nine thousand dollars. Before we move forward, I would like to get more information from the board, what direction um, and projects you may have in mind. Um, my, my one concern is that with lights, that the town is going to have to address those one way or the other for aesthetics and safety. Um, but we are certainly open. This was just a place to start with ideas that the board may have and would like for us to research further. Teresa, with uh, Duke, um, providing the upgrade, why would they not provide the design as well? Okay, okay. Um, good point. These pedestrian lights are actually owned by the town of Wendell. We met, uh, staff met with Duke Energy and asked about them coming in, doing the work, and the town leasing back the poles from them like we do on many of our other downtown lights. They said because of None of the electrical, the conduits, the post would meet their standard. It would require them removing all of that, tearing up the concrete in the sidewalk, and it would just be very expensive on the front end, the construction costs for them to rewire all of that downtown for the pedestrian lights. They recommended that we go and um, keep the pedestrian lights under town ownership, and upgrade the lighting ourselves. The infrastructure. Yes, yes. They just felt that it was going to cost too much if the town had to 
work with them to bring everything up to a standard that they would take over, they felt that it was probably more than we would be able to afford right now. So when we update it, and, not, and we're not using two for whoever updates it, are mm -hmm. they going to have to tear up sidewalks? They will on the, um, to some degree on the, on Main Street, south of, um, south of um, Third, there between uh, Third and the Bank, and then on um, both sides of Third between Main and Cypress, and then on one side of Third between Main and Pine. Um, we did do this a while back on some of the upper sections. What you will see is where uh, we cut out, and there's some extra um, saw cuts. We cut that out, replaced the wiring, the conduit, and we did, we did that several years ago where we started and we just never have gotten to the area south of, south of Maine or south of Third. Okay, so the total, I, I hate to get off on a tangent here, but the total cost of that project, whether we use these funds or we have the budget for it another year, is 30000 It's going to be uh, about thirty three to 35000 and that, the, and that is for construction, then 10-6 for the engineering. Okay. Have we spoken to uh, the economic development committee at all about any other things off the head? No, we have not. Tonight was, again, just simply to brainstorm, but that is something we do not mind doing. We do have until um, October to submit all the paperwork uh, for the uh, return of the funds, but we have we have some time. But when, as we know, October will be here before we know it. I, I was I was thinking just you know somebody would be good to talk to even um, just downtown business owners as well too. Uh, they have these you know this is the electrical issue, this is the water issue, there's anything going on in that town that mm -hmm. uh, that might spur other ideas. I think it'd be good to know from as well too. Um, they're kind of that people who they're working every day and living. Okay. Absolutely, not a not a problem at all. We can we can certainly go that route. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Item number six is discussion and review of the town charter and rules of procedure. Uh, Ms. Piner. Madam Mayor, members of the board, during the budget process, uh, the town did set aside funds to uh, have the attorney look at uh, at the town charter, um, and. Some of those areas, I'm not sure there's a lot of issues with the charter itself, but over a period of time as we make changes to other chapters and how it relates, there are some areas that just doesn't quite align properly and to have the attorney to take a look at those. So I, one is coming here today to the board and asking if you have any uh, specific concerns um, and if you would like to us to go ahead and contact the attorney to get started on that review. We'll be glad glad to do so. Some of those things um, actually included, um, we had talked about elections and how do we want to continue as we are or do we want to look at districts and so those are some of the things that, that you know, this would be a good time to discuss those if needed or we could continue of course as we are. Um, and then the other um, is with the rules of procedure. Again, we were looking at how things are changing over a period of time because of looking at the charter and how things uh, with other, how it relates to other chapters. Rules of procedure, um, you know, I was able to go through there and saw some things that were conflicting. Um, you know, some places it says preparing agenda two days ahead, others it says 10 days ahead. It also talks in there uh, about when the town gets the funds that we're going to have East Wake TV, our, our uh, board meeting shown on East Wake TV. Well, we are now. Um, now some of the things to look at are, um, do we want to stream live on YouTube or Facebook, our board meetings? And so we've advanced. Um, and so that's just an option now. Also, there's nothing really in there about electronics. Um, you know, today we have laptops, iPads, um, cell phones, and then how would we want to use that as we're sitting at the desk? Um, and so those are just some of the things that it's a good time to start brainstorming um, as we're looking at the charter to bring these other items up as well. And again, we'd be glad to take 
If you've looked at this and have any questions, we'd be glad to take a look at some of those items and see what we can come back with. Has the town attorney completed his review of all this? No, ma'am. Uh, um, when we approved the budget, we were um, we have not told him to get started uh, to start on that yet, and that's the reason I, we were thinking the rules of procedures and the charter would be kind of a good time to look at all this together. Okay. Well, uh, for me, honestly, I'd like to start with him. I think that's a good place to start. Okay. And then bring it back to us, unless there's something y'all would like to add to that. Right. To start with the charter? Well, we need to get it right with the attorney before we, and then he can guide us in any nuances. With the rules of procedure, feel. then move to the rules yeah. of procedure? That would be fine. Do y'all have any suggestions, comments, anything? All right. There was no there was a variety of background corrections that probably made, but I'm feeling more comfortable with the attorney looking at it and sending it back to us with his changes. We can take care of grammar at some point as well. All right. Item number seven is update on board committees for town board meetings. Um, Commissioner Myrick, East Lake Senior Auxiliary Meeting. Yes, the East Lake Senior uh, Center Auxiliary met last Thursday. Um, about three months prior when we met, they had asked for some money from the town for a new sign and we didn't give it to them, we didn't budget for it. Uh, we have spent a lot of money on that facility over the last couple of years, so they have raised the funds for a new sign and they have uh, requested some assistance navigating the sign ordinance. So I'll be working with uh, Mr. Bird Mark on that in the next week or so. <coughs> Great. Campo at this meeting, but they did not meet this month. Um, commissioner's reports, we'll start with uh, Commissioner Joyner. Commissioner Boyett. Nothing tonight. Commissioner Myrick. Nothing tonight, ma'am. Commissioner Luke. Nothing tonight, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner uh, Carroll. No comment. All right, well, y'all know I have a little something to say quickly. Um, I'm a member of the steering committee for the that's established in the nonprofit for the events downtown, and we've been meeting. We've met several times in the last little bit. Um, it was mentioned tonight, and if you recall, the town board has budgeted up to five thousand dollars for that group to establish that. <clears throat> and uh, we're working with the town attorney on the submission of that application and the accompanying information. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to proceed really soon. I'm very excited about that. It's going to be a great help to uh, the town. I attended the Bond with the Blue at the farmhouse at Wendell Falls. I sure appreciate them having us and our police officers out there. Um, I think they gave away a, a dozens of popsicles and badge stickers and so forth and police car tours. So it was a great evening and I appreciate them having us and our police officers for being out there. Um, the last thing I attended along with um, Commissioner Lutz the Wake County Mayor's Association summer outing this past week. They invite um, town boards and staff and so forth, and Ms. Piner and Ms. Scoggins, and um, I believe that your husband, Mr. Scoggins, was with us as well. He's a baseball fan. And, um, my husband, John's kids, so we had a, little, a good little crowd. It's a wonderful chance to get to meet folks from other Wake County towns, it's staff, um, elected officials, and, and so forth. And, in the relaxed environment, it's, it's important things like that because it sets the stage for uh, future professional encounters, and so it's important that we go to things like that. And that's it. So, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All right, we're adjourned. Good night. Thank you.